Welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Wynn. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. And I'm Dr. Alice Chang, endocrinologist. Awesome. Today we have Dr. Chang has come as an endocrinologist to talk to us about the many, many interesting things about endocrinology. And today we're talking about a very hot topic, particularly on social media, Ozempic. So exciting to have a real doctor on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> all right. So, so what is all the hype and why does Ozempic matter to people? So just to put it in perspective, Ozempic is a medication called semaglutide. And semaglutide is a big mm -hmm. word. And yeah. it belongs to a class of medicines called GLP-1 receptor agonists, which again is sort of more alphabet soup like we like to do in medicine. Yep. Uh, but bottom line, what it is, is it is mimicking a hormone that all of us make when we eat. So whenever we eat, you end up, your gut starts to make a hormone called GLP-1. And its job, naturally, is to tell the body that you've eaten. So it tells the pancreas, the organ that makes insulin, that, hey, food is here, so the insulin levels go up. And there's another hormone called glucagon that then goes down. And its job, then, is to put all of that nutrient and sugar and stuff into storage, so out of your uh, blood circulation. The other thing it does, though, is it tells the stomach that, hey, food has arrived, so it actually tells the stomach to slow down emptying. Now, if you think about when you go to a buffet, what kind of pants do you wear? You don't wear your tight skinny <laughs> jeans. You wear, you know, stretchy pants. Why? Because you want to eat more so that you can actually... So the, if food is still in your stomach, you're going to feel full faster, uh, which is what part of that hormone's job. And it also tells the brain that, hey, food is here. Maybe I'm full. Maybe I should stop eating. So that's a hormone we naturally make. People living with type 2 diabetes specifically, there's a problem in that system. So one of the ways to fix that is to actually give that hormone back to the person so that it will increase those effects. And then we tend to give a lot of it, which then accentuates those effects. That's what ozempic or semaglutide is, is essentially that hormone. So they were originally designed to help treat type 2 diabetes and Absolutely. help diabetics have better sugar control, essentially. So if I can simplify it so I understand it. It kind of tricks your body into thinking you're full and tricks your body into thinking you made this hormone, that you've got food in there, even when you might not have as much food as before. Right. So when someone's taking the medication, what they'll notice is they eat less okay. and they're happily eating less because they have less of, let's say, half of their typical plate, but they're thinking, I'm, I'm good. Wow. That's a brilliant medication. It, it is. It is. Okay. So... It's been approved by uh, the Canadian regulators as well as the FDA for type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. A lot of people talk about the beneficial weight gain of Ozempic. So this is obviously an issue and it's a very weight popular. Weight loss. Weight loss, sorry. Weight, weight loss. loss, yeah. No, that would not be good. Yeah. That drug would not be a popular drug. <laughs> You've got so, a negative <laughs> attitude towards it already. Dr. Right. So, so weight loss. Um, but it's not approved for this necessarily. So the, the medication semaglutide in the form of Ozempic, the name Ozempic, is actually a once-weekly injectable right. approved to manage type 2 diabetes, right. shown to lower sugars, and with that, lower weight, as well as some blood pressure effects. But the same drug, semaglutide, has actually been studied for the treatment of obesity and has worked at higher doses than we typically use in diabetes. And that drug is also approved in Canada uh, under a different name, under the name Wagovi, yeah. and that is for the treatment of obesity. Right, and I think I read that the reason Ozempic's got a lot of popularity is because people can't get Wagovi. It was difficult, there were some supply chain issues, so then off-label, doctors could, with a justifiable reason, prescribe Ozempic in the place of Wagovi. And I thought Ozempic was actually back-ordered for a while, too, in the States. So in, in Canada, we've been, we've been fortunate in that that has not happened, and Wagovi, although approved, uh, at least as of this time, is not yet commercially available. Right. Uh, and I think it does have to do with, if you want to be smart about it, you're going to put it out when you've got drug to give people, right? right. Um, so that's that's what it is. Now, it, but I think it is worth emphasizing, Ozempic is meant for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Right. And I guess next question, is it effective? Is it good? At, is it a good drug? It is a very good drug for the reasons that we use it, yeah. right? So I definitely have lots of people in my practice who are on it, either Ozempic or medications like Ozempic. And what we see is great reductions in sugar, reductions in weight, uh, blood pressure therefore comes down. Uh, but on top of that, there actually is evidence for that class of medications, and this is very important, to reduce the risk of heart attacks and strokes. Right. Which is really the main reason 
that I usually suggest it to my patients is for organ protection. And at this point, they're not sure of the mechanism, right? I think I read they're talking maybe reduced inflammation in the arterial walls, maybe the beneficial effects of lower triglycerides and lipids, but not necessarily in everybody, but they're not sure, right? Correct. So are the studies so far just reduced those secondary incidents in people with diabetes or in the general population? So at this point, the, the data for the GLP-1 receptor agonists are around those living with diabetes, okay. those living with type 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. and they found success in those who already have cardiovascular disease or those with multiple risk factors. With diabetes or without? With diabetes. Okay. Okay. And they've shown reductions in, as I said, heart attacks, strokes, and cardiovascular death as well. So wow. pretty important endpoints. And you're absolutely right. We don't fully understand why. Uh, and, and you always know that's the case when you read journals and there's a bazillion mm -hmm. review articles with mm -hmm. lots of very intelligent hypotheses, then you know we're still sorting it out. Okay, now our viewers just love big pharma and love new <laughs> medications and being sarcastic. Is this a, are you like a lifer once you're on Ozempic or is it the kind of thing you use for a while then, okay, I'm good now, I don't need to use it anymore? So type two diabetes is a chronic disease and frankly, obesity is a chronic disease and, right. and we recognize that now. So like all chronic diseases, uh, this is not a cure. Uh, this is a medication that helps to manage it. So therefore when you stop it, then the effects are taken off, right? It's kind of mm -hmm. like if you're driving a car and you're pressing the brakes and then you release the brakes, well, then obviously the car is going to move again. Right. So sugars will come back up, weight could come back okay. up, et cetera. There's other ways to manage diabetes, of course, right? So it's not like uh, you absolutely cannot live without it. You can stop it if needed, but those effects are going to be gone. Right. And then I was going to ask, is Ozempic the only show in town? You alluded to some other medications that act in a similar fashion. Are there other options other than Ozempic? Absolutely. So the other GLP-1 receptor agonists that are injectable, uh, so Trulicity or Dulaglutide is another one. It's another once weekly okay. injectable. Uh, semaglutide is also available as an oral medication oh, as really? well. So it's available orally as a drug called Ribelsis. Uh, and then there are other GLP-1s that are daily use injections. And frankly, we don't use a lot of those because if you have a weekly option, yeah. weekly injection versus daily, we tend to go daily, uh, weekly. Mm -hmm. So we're really talking Ozempic, Trulicity, Ribelsis. So the last question, obviously the dangers of taking stuff off label, but are there any side effects to these medications? Because safety obviously is a big issue, particularly if you're taking it just to try to lose weight and maybe not with direct supervision. We want, we want people to know that this is not something that you should do on your own. No, no, absolutely. This, like all medications, there are potential side effects. And the big one for this whole class, it's not specific to those, that drug specifically, but the whole class, is uh, nausea, vomiting. Okay. So mm -hmm. nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, uh, not all of the above in every person. Like a <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it, uh, it absolutely can happen in about 20% of people. Okay. They mm. can get nausea, vomiting. Uh, the thing is, it's usually transient. Okay. So it tends to go away, and it's a matter of sort of toughing it out as your body yeah. gets used to it. And also, we can play with the doses to, to try to minimize that as much as possible. As we always say, every treatment, every medication, anything we do always has some side effects, right? Yeah. Risk, and there's always risk and benefit to any treatment. Nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea. <laughs> there you go. It does sound like a commercial. It does. I think that's Pepto-Bismol slogan. Sounds like my drive into work today. <laughs> there you go. Now you know, we, we would encourage you that if this is something that you're interested in, please talk to your doctor as there are a lot of different choices and options and everybody's a little bit different. So you need to find a plan that's individualized for you with your physician. But now you know all about Ozempic. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And remember, we always say lifestyle first. And then if that's not working, then you got to start looking at other interventions. And you are in charge of your own health. And thanks to Dr. Shaker for joining us and providing us with Thank her expertise. You so much. No problem. My pleasure. We'll see you next time.